Welcome to this video on the predictions for the 2020 A-Level Psychology exam. So this is the video for paper one. If you browse through our videos, you'll find predictions for the other papers as well. And you'll also find some revision uh, videos on our channel too. If you're less video inclined, then please check out our podcast, which is called Super Psychology. You can find that on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. And I'll post a link to the podcast in the video description. OK, so this is the video for AQA, and I just want to state before going into the detail that this video is not endorsed by AQA or any schools or companies that I may work with. I have no secret insight. No one does, and anyone says that they do is lying. These predictions are based on a review of the past exam series for A-level psychology, looking at areas that haven't come up or perhaps some that have come up and have maybe been poorly answered by students. OK, with that out of the way, let's take a look at social influence. So here's our starting point, which is the specification that I'm going to be working through here. So I'm going to be referring to specific parts of this. So I strongly advise you to maybe print off a copy of this from the AQA website, uh, grab a highlighter and make some notes as I go through. All right, so the first area of interest in social influence is the types of conformity, and those are identification, internalization, and compliance. Now, these haven't been mentioned at all yet, so this potential scope for a 16 mark question here, and also maybe a potential differences question between the types of conformity. Now, ASH 2 is an area in uh, social that hasn't been mentioned at all, which is quite surprising, actually. Uh, but be wary of an ASH question as it's likely to focus specifically on the variables affecting conformity. That is group size, task difficulty and unanimity. Now, the big one, of course, in social that hasn't had no mention is Zimbardo's research into social roles. And I advise you to be careful on this in a 16 mark question in the sense that you don't need to overkill your AO1. It's very, very easy to get lost in the detail of what Zimbardo did without giving ample time for any evaluation. Now, like Zimbardo, we also haven't had anything on Milgram either. Now, again, like Ash, be sure to know the very variations of Milgram with proximity and location. And there is also reference to research into the effect of uniform. Uh, that could be, for example, the research of Bickman. Now, with minority influence, there was an application question back in 2018, but there's been nothing in terms of evaluation in this area. OK, on to memory now. Again, this is the specification for memory that I'm going to be taking a look through. So the first one that I just want to talk about is capacity and duration in relation to the multi-store model of memory. Now, there was a specific question on coding in 2017, and there was a 16 mark question on the multi-store model of memory last year, but it was incredibly badly done by students. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something on the multi-store model of memory again. Like I said, perhaps more angled towards capacity and duration. Now, in 2017, there was a question on the differences between procedural and episodic memory, but we've had nothing on long term memory since. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something on long term memory, perhaps a STEM question or a six mark A01 question. Now, for the working memory model, there hasn't been too much mentioned of it at all. Uh, there were six marks back in 2018. Four of those marks were asking for a strength of the model. So I definitely look out for a question on the weaknesses of the working memory model. Or, like I say, with because you had the multi-store model 16 marker last year, I wouldn't be surprised to see an eight or a 16 marker for the working model of memory. Now, in terms of forgetting, we have seen some questions on forgetting, but they weren't specific to either retrieval failure or absence of cues. So you may expect to see a specific question on those elements of forgetting. The last one on here is the big one. We haven't had anything on the role of anxiety in eyewitness testimony. And this for me is my biggest red flag in all of memory. I'd certainly expect to see this as maybe a 16 mark question or an eight mark. Okay, so on to attachment. Now, we haven't seen too much on infant caregiver interaction since 2017, so I wouldn't be shocked to see some mention of this again. 
Now, with the stages of attachment, there was a question in 2017, but it was a really straightforward three mark question where you just had to name the stages. So I think there's a lot of scope here for perhaps an eight mark or a 16 marker on Schaefer's research here. Now, Harlow and Lorenz and the animal studies of attachment were mentioned in 2018, but it was just a six mark AO1 question on procedure. So I'd imagine something on evaluation of Lorenz and Harlow would be very, very likely. Uh, we've had practically nothing on the strange situation, which is huge. And this would certainly be my big predict prediction for 2020. So make sure you can describe the procedures and the findings and also be able to evaluate the strange situation as a method of assessing attachment types. There may also be something specific to the secure and insecure avoidant attachment types, as there was a two mark question in 2017 on insecure resistant. OK, now Bowlby's maternal deprivation hypothesis hasn't been mentioned at all. So again, big red flag for you. A uh, word of warning with this. Uh, beware that his maternal deprivation hypothesis is different from his monotropic theory. Uh, so basically check, you know, your 44 thieves for this one. Uh, now, the last one here is unlikely, given that in 2019 there was a 16 mark question on the influence of early attachment on later relationships. But there may be some kind of sneaky question on the role of the internal working model thrown in somewhere, as it hasn't been specifically mentioned yet. All right, then the final one is psychopathology. Now, I'd expect to see something on the characteristics as phobias as it hasn't been examined and the characteristics of depression and OCD have both come up. That being said, in reference to those three disorders, there's been nothing specific on emotional characteristics at all. Now, the two process model as an explanation of phobias has only ever been mentioned as a limitation question. So I think it's highly likely to maybe see an eight mark or a maybe even a 16 mark on the two process model. Now, there was a 16 mark question on the cognitive approach to the treatment of depression. That was back in 2018, but there's been no mention of the cognitive approach to explaining depression. So a real red flag there again. So be sure you know your cognitive triad uh, and Ellison's ABC model. Uh, two other kind of red flag areas to consider. Number one is the genetic explanation of OCD. Now, there was an eight marker last year on the neural explanation of OCD. So I really wouldn't be surprised to see the genetic come up in 2020. And finally, uh, the biological treatment of OCD hasn't factored in at all. And this is a real potential 16 mark question, in my opinion. OK, so that's all for paper one. If you have any questions, post them in the comments section and I'll respond there or I might do a larger kind of question and answer video if there's a lot to respond to. So like I said, don't forget to check out the other videos and have a check out of the podcast Super Psychology.